Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 141st episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday the 23rd of August and I'm recording it on Monday the 22nd. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. My contact details are on the screen if you want to share anything of questions, uh, just want to say hello, I don't know, uh, please use any of the handles on the screen and I'll be happy to engage with you. For today, um, well, I, we discussed markets over the last few weeks and I think I made it pretty clear that I was very, I was still very cautious. And last week, obviously at the end of last week, we got a bit of a turnaround and we got a good, good follow through at the start of today on Monday, <clears throat> about a, um, I think it's 2% down and um, interesting rotations. And for this episode, I am going to spend my time about 50-50 on asset class rotation and then sector rotation and try to get a handle on what we can expect for the market as a whole, the S&P 500. And I'm going to do that first from an asset class perspective, combination with rotations in bond yields and the US dollar. And then when we move to the sector rotation, I'm going to try to put that all together into, uh, again, renewed strength, st renewed strength in defensive sectors, um, as well as a break to new highs for the utility sector, which I think is the most important uh, event that we had last week when you talk about sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. Let's kick off with a look at the rotation of asset classes. We have the weekly RRG on the left and the daily RRG on the right. And if we start with the one on the left, then we can clean that up a little bit because DJP and GSG, both commodity ETFs, they are still inside the leading quadrant and given the length of the tails and the um, amount of power that's behind those moves allegedly, uh, it's very likely that they will cross over into the lagging quadrant in the next couple of weeks. Does that make them, does that go negative for commodities? Yeah, probably for the short term, but we have seen the longer term turnarounds in those commodity charts. Um, and especially when we look at the monthlies, which we will do in not next week, but the week after, that turnaround is still there. So I'm still judging this rotation as the first big uh, drawdown, drawback in, in, uh, since the turnaround of commodities started. If you look at uh, the US dollar index, that is an interesting rotation. Um, we've been pointing out the strength of the US dollar in sector spotlight for quite some time already. And... We saw the US dollar index uh, declining and we saw uh, the dollar declining. And if you look at euro dollar, you saw that picking up pace a little bit. And um, that is changing. We will look at the chart in a minute. And given the position of the tail of the US dollar index, uh, I think the odds are very, very high that this will uh, rotate back up while inside the weakening quadrant and go back to leading. So still working on the scenario that the US dollar will get stronger in coming weeks. Now, if we tick off those tails to clear up our chart and fit it back in, then we get what's going on with stocks, bonds and uh, real estate. And what we see here is the um, counter trend moves uh, of, of stocks and bonds. So we've got Basically, all bonds-related asset classes, corporate bonds, high yield and government on the right-hand side with high yield and government already in weakening. And we've got SPY inside improving, uh, followed by real estate V&Q. This is the weekly rotation. So what it actually means is that the uh, rotation went negative for stocks over bonds quite a while ago. And now we have a, a, a move back up. So the question is whether this move, this rotation will be strong enough to bring 
SPY to bring stocks back into the lead on an asset class level. And for that, I think we need to switch to the daily RRG. And if we quickly go over uh, GSG, DJP and the US dollar, you set them all three here. And um, so this is already, you see already shorter term improvement for GSG and USD. I'm not sure whether that is strong enough to keep them out of the lagging quadrant on the weekly. Um, for the US dollar, I think it is. You see that it's already moving into the improving quadrant uh, while it's inside weakening, but very high on the hours ratio scale in the weekly. So that move is underscoring the idea and the scenario of further US dollar strength in coming weeks. If we look at the rotation of golf, uh, uh, bonds related, so golf corporates and high yield, you see that they are already starting to pick up and turn back up. Question is, will they be able, will this rotation back here be strong enough to pull those back up into leading, but maybe more importantly, the weakness that is setting in in SPY and to a lesser extent real estate, will that eventually draw the rotation of SPY around? It's, I think it's a bit early to tell, but what we're seeing in the development of SPY at the end of last week and the start of this week, uh, there is definitely some weakness coming in SPY. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the individual charts. Let me start with those first. I think the US dollar is pretty crucial also in relationship to the US stock market. A strong US dollar historically is not very strong for US stocks. So that's a negative aspect, a negative element, if you wish. If you look at the chart of the US dollar index, you can see that after the break in the initial rally, we saw it falling back. And here you see another very good example where you know, a former high is starting to act as support on the way down. And it looks as if this decline has now completed and we're on the way back up and we're challenging to break to new highs. If you, and I, I, I think we're already doing that today, um, especially when you look at the chart of Euro dollar, uh, and this is the daily version. And I know for a fact, I'm looking at a real time screen next to me, US dollar at the moment is trading at uh, 0.994, which is below the previous low. So if we, if we maintain this level um, until the close of today, that's the close in New York, then, um, then we're breaking to new lows or the, the dollar breaks to new highs. And that is, you know, purely looking at the trend, a, um, a, a signal for a continuation of the persisting trend. And I think we all agree that this trend is down for Euro dollar, which means up for the US dollar. And it gets uh, even more clear when we look at the weekly version of this chart, where you see that the steepness of the trend is accelerating and we're coming out of this small um, recovery rally within the boundaries of that falling channel and going below 0.995, which is happening right now. We didn't close there yet, but it's happening. Uh, suggests that there is more downside to come for Euro dollar, i.e. more upside for the US dollar. Now, what does that mean for stocks? Here is the daily chart for the S&P 500 for SPY. And I, you know that I'm not the biggest user of diagonal trend lines, but I was eyeballing this one and I just had to put it in and had to try whether it was aligning. So I basically connected those two highs here and lo and behold, we're, we're on the dot, well, at least very close to that falling resistance line. Um, we hit that, I, I've been telling you there's, there's a, a, a supply, a lot of supply, overhead supply resistance levels coming from previous highs. And, um, and it looks that we found, finally, we found the resistance around 4.30. Um, the, the opening today, this is today, is, uh, is quite nasty. It's immediately bringing us back below the previous high, which was 4.15. We've got to see how this works out, but start of the week is not too good. And it's, it's certainly damaging the, um, the recent trend upward. And I think that is super important because what's happening now, the, we're, we're now entering a phase which is pretty crucial to determine 
whether we are we are we will regain the downtrend because last week I, I told you that uh, the end of a downtrend does not necessarily mean the beginning of a new uptrend and that was more based on my weekly chart where we broke below the previous high which meant that there was no series of lower highs and lower lows anymore but as you can see it's also not a series of higher highs and higher lows and therefore um, I think that we're now going into a phase which is pretty crucial because the next low that will be put into place on the weekly spy chart will give us a lot of information about the underlying longer term trend. If we put in a higher low and that technically it could be anywhere above 362. So we could go all the way down to 365, 370, whatever, put in a new low and that would be a very strong sign for a resumption of the longer term uptrend. If that doesn't happen and we break below that 362 level, then obviously we're picking up a new downtrend. It's way too early there and I'm pretty sure that we'll be talking um, before that's happening. But I am now on higher alert with regard to the positioning of the highs and lows on the weekly chart to potentially pick up a, a new uptrend in a very early stage or um, the confirmation that the downtrend is not over yet. One chart that I want to share with you more is the one <coughs> is for IEF. That's the 7 to 10 year bond ETF. And what we see there is this could very well be the start of the building of a new inverted head and shoulder. Remember that big head and shoulders pattern that gave us a target around 100, which was uh, pretty much reached to the dot. Um, it looks as if that former uh, or that support level is now indeed acting as support. And we are potentially building a, an inverted head and shoulders pattern. That could be very interesting because if, if and this is, that's a big if, if we move back up to let's say 106 and we penetrate 106 to the upside, then we are very likely facing uh, a period of rallying bond prices and falling yields. And that would be very interesting to see in relationship to the uh, development on the S&P chart, which we just discussed. And obviously this is the reverse. This is the 10 year US bond yields and you will see the exact same pattern, but now inverted. So here it's a regular um, head and shoulders pattern, potentially. I mean, there's, it's way too early to call it like that. But with a little fantasy, I could see the right shoulder forming right here, breaking lower. If that happens, then let me do that very quickly. We're around 3.4 here. We're around 2.7 here. That is uh, 710, so that's 70 bips below the breakout, which we can put, if that happens, it's an angled neckline, let's say two and a half. So that would give us a target around 1.8 in 10 year yields. That would be somewhere around here. Let's keep an eye on that because that, that could be a very interesting uh, relationship developing here. I'm gonna leave it at this for uh, the asset classes and we're gonna switch to sectors in a minute. So what about sectors and sector rotation? With a turnaround as we've seen at the end of last week and starting this week, it's always interesting to see what that translates to on a relative rotation graph. We have the weekly version on the left, the daily on the right, showing the spider sector ETFs. And if we start on the left hand side with the weekly, with the longer term picture, and I'm going to toggle them one by one, then we see the improvement of technology moving into the leading quadrant. <clears throat> that strength is obviously still there, but it's coming into the leading quadrant with hardly any relative momentum, which is a drawback. So uh, at, at least signals caution. If we Go to communication services, that is a pretty clear rotation back down to lagging. So that remains a very weak sector. If we go to consumer discretionary, that tail is actually looking promising. It's still inside improving 
it's heading towards leading. Given the speed of the move, it will very likely cross over into leading. The question is how much relative momentum will be left when that happens. We do need to look at the individual chart, the price chart, to make up our minds and, and come to a conclusion on that one. <clears throat> then energy. Inside weakening with a long tail for big move already, big rotation already. And it's now starting to pick up relative momentum. Here also the power behind the move suggests that we will see it moving into the lagging quadrant. But already with uh, a pickup of relative momentum. So um, we're, we're seeing shifts going on here on this weekly RRG. And we do need to find the combination between dailies, weeklies, and maybe the individual charts to make up our mind and come to a conclusion for the rotations of the individual charts. Here is utility, similar, similar to um, the energy tail, although much shorter, so much less power, <clears throat> but also to the right and picking up relative momentum. And this one is actually uh, way ahead of the 100 level on the R's ratio scale which means that there is plenty of opportunity for XLU to rotate back up into leading without ever hitting the lagging quadrant. And that's obviously a very defensive sector. And that's, a, that's an important uh, thing. That's an important sector that I'm keeping an eye on. Now, if we go to healthcare, that's another defensive sector, um, actually still very high on the RS ratio scale, not necessarily picking up relative momentum yet, but also still not close to crossing over into lagging. So <clears throat> these defensive sectors remain on alert, or at least they keep me on alert, to see what's happening there and whether they'll be able to curl back up into the leading quadrant and get into that zero to 90 degree heading and lead the market. And defensive sectors leading the market is usually not a very good sign for the S&P as a whole. Here is the staples, here's the third defensive sector. So you see them all close together. And here, uh, staples already picking up relative momentum, a just a little bit, not as much, but all the opportunities to curl back up without hitting the lagging quadrant and crossing below 100 on the RS ratio scale. So defensive, still on the right-hand side, um, negative momentum is fading and uh, especially staples and utilities are already picking up relative momentum to the upside. <clears throat> Industrials, very close to the benchmark, so there is not much to gain there. And uh, the, uh, we have materials, which is now definitely uh, inside the lagging quadrant, not much negative momentum there. So we have to wait and see how that turns out, but it's moving, it's now in a relative downtrend versus the S&P 500. <clears throat> Here we have financials, which is at a, at a very short tail, uh, inside lagging. So that means that it is in a relative downtrend versus the S&P 500. And the short tail suggests that it's a stable trend. There's not much power there. So you can expect it to remain in that position and be a relative underperformer versus the S&P 500 in the next couple of weeks. And then we have real estate, which is crawling back up inside the lagging quadrant very close to, um, to the S&P 500, very close to the benchmark, just like industrials. So very likely not much to gain there. Now, what does that mean? How do we relate that to what's happening on the shorter term time frame? So you're at a longer term. So what does that mean here? So here we have energy. Look at that. Powering into the leading quadrant while the weekly is already picking up relative momentum. Again, I am not entirely sure whether this move will be able to keep XLE out of the lagging quadrant, but it's definitely a strong sign for the energy sector as a whole when you see uh, a, a strong turn on the daily, which can start to support the turn on the weekly RRG. So I'm going to keep an eye on the energy sector from a positive perspective. Here we have financials. <clears throat> the little hiccup here that is caused or, or the, the hiccup here is the result of the move up there. It depends on how you want to look at it. But the improvement for the financial sector is definitely there. It, it moved it the weekly up for the last few weeks, but you can see that the daily tail is now already starting to lose relative momentum, um, which is not a good thing if you want to pull that weekly all the way back up. So I'm going to remain very cautious with the financial sector. Now here is utilities. Here you see that um, unusual move back up, well, 
it's it's back into the lead it's back into that zero to 90 degree angle uh, which means that it is very likely that it's going to start this weekly tail back up by the way the utility sector is the only sector now that traded at new all-time highs last week when the utility sector is breaking to new highs ladies and gentlemen that is not that's usually not the sign of a bull market it's usually not the sign of a strong trend when youths uh, are leading the market higher <clears throat> here is healthcare insight improving it's very low on the rs ratio scale that's why we have that tail um, still moving lower on the on both axes on the weekly we're picking up and we have to wait and see whether that move whether that defense move to defense will be strong enough to curl that xlv tail up on the weekly rrg XLP, same story. Can, we have seen that it's already picking up on the weekly, so that's going to be supported by strong um, relative momentum uh, for staples on the daily RRG. Communication services definitely supporting the move lower uh, on the weekly here. Materials rolling over before hitting the leading quadrant. That is supporting the weakness in the materials sector that we saw there. Real estate remaining close to the benchmark. That is exactly what it is here on the weekly and then we have uh, consumer discretionary rapidly losing relative momentum and relative strength on the daily RRG and um, we're going to wait and see if it turns that XLY tail down while it's still inside improving or will we see a little a little move into leading and then rolling over uh, this still is not sending very good uh, signs, especially not when you look at the price chart of XLY. <clears throat> Here is industrials, short tail, just crossing over into weakening. Uh, and if combined that, very close to the benchmark, not much to gain there either. And here is technology together with um, uh, discretionary inside the weakening quadrant, starting to move rapidly towards the lagging quadrant. And um, that here, that tail is starting to, to lose or it's already lost relative momentum. If this continues, we will very likely see the tail of XLK roll over and before it starts to really perform inside leading, roll over back down to weakening and into lagging. That's it for the sector rotations and the combination between daily and weekly. And I think my take is that defense is doing too well. I mean, if this, if this rally that we have seen uh, out of the recent low <clears throat> um, is very sustainable, then I would expect to see the more cyclical, the more offensive sectors to actually pick up and, and give me more strength. But that's not happening. As a matter of fact, I now see a lot more strength coming into the defensive sectors again. And yes, um, I did not expect that S&P rally to last as long as it did. But with it running into resistance right now, and with the renewed strength starting to show in defensive sectors, I do think that the S&P um, at least needs one more leg down. And whether that's going to go below the 362 low that we've seen, I don't know. But... Um, as I said last week, I don't think it's going to go straight up from here and, and it looks as if we're going to get that now. So the coming weeks, I think we need to talk about, are uh, going to be crucial for the longer term development of the S&P 500. Whether we were going to see a new higher low to be put into place or will we um, break below that 360 level, 362 level and go much lower. Time will tell and sector rotation will hopefully help us with that. <clears throat> Let me give you, I'm going to give you the utilities chart because I think that is, uh, that is the most important chart that we've seen this week. This, this break above its previous high, break to new all-time highs. And this is Monday. This is only today's price action, uh, dropping slightly lower, not much. But last week's close below the all-time high was a, a new all-time high, obviously. And I think that is, that is a, a very important indicator in the market. When huge breaking to new highs, I'm on, I'm on high alert with, uh, with regard to the S&P 500. And 
I was looking at this chart and when you look at a bar chart and you, you're not very sure whether it's breaking or not, a little trick that I, that I sometimes apply is change from a bar chart to a line chart. And if you do that with the utilities chart and you can see very clearly that we broke above that previous close, we're now dropping back, but mind you, this is fluid. This is only today. So if, now let's put it like this, this last Friday's close was 77.7 .7 for XLU. Um, if we close at or above 77.7, .7, I think that the, the move to new all-time highs is, uh, is confirmed and we will see more upside for utilities. More upside for utilities, usually not a good sign for the S&P 500. And with that, we have come to the end of another episode of Sector Spotlight. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Please remember, Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. Looking forward to see you again next week, same time, same place. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.